Hello and welcome to Americans Learn. My name is Lauren and today I'm back with some casual geographic. Uh, this one is going to be the insane plot armor of cats. Now, I already knew that cats are a little bit wild in the things that they can kind of get away with, but I'm curious to see exactly which ones he, which the things he's going to talk about are because I always feel like I learn a lot with these casual geographic videos and also I get to see some fun videos of animals and I like cats. I am a cat person. Well, and I, I like dogs too. I'm not just a cat person. Dogs are also quite good. But I want to see what, what this nonsense is going to be because cats are just chaos incarnate a lot of the time. So I'm curious. I hope you are too. And I don't want to waste any more time. Let us watch about the insane plot armor of cats. How, how many times are they going to be supposed to die and don't? Let's find out. Oh my God, what in the? Mama, come get it. Oh, get rid of that Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. Grab the girl hand. Oh Lord, you are, oh. Broken, a term used to describe a character so overpowered that they make the game stop functioning as intended and exploit the game's balance in their favor. Well, if cats aren't the most broken animals on the planet, God must have discontinued first place. I talk a lot about animals that got shafted by evolution. In fact, my most popular video today was about 10 of them. Well, if I ever do a video on nature's favorites, cats would surely be at the very top. Cats are arguably the most successful predators we've ever seen. With so many overpowered <laughs> Slap. you'd swear it was plot armor. I don't even want to make this intro too long, so here's 10 superpowers your cat has that you may or may not have known. And number- I do love just like the random- you know, whack. Like, why do they do that? Like, what do they just feel the need to push buttons or like, is it an actual defense mechanism? Like, I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, maybe they're just a jerk. You know, I had a, I played a game once where it's like, you were allowed to name your, your pet. And I had a cat and its name was the honorable Sir Jerk face because it was a cat. Like, what else are you going to call it? But I just have always like, hmm. It's like, because sometimes it's like just, it really does seem out of nowhere. They just like go on the offensive. Like that one who just attacked the seal for no reason. Like why? Number one, zero fall damage. You've probably heard that cats always land on their feet, but the real flex is being able to fall from heights that would have any human furnishing a coffin. A 1987 study showed that out of 132 cats that were brought to an emergency vet in New York City after falling out of a high rise, 90% lived and less than 40% required life-saving treatment. It gets even wow. wilder when you realize that cats actually have a better chance of getting airdrop from a building and walking it off the higher the drop was. And it's all because oh. cats understand physics. You see, when you're in free fall, you accelerate towards the ground until you reach terminal velocity where you literally can't fall any faster. When cats reach TV, they splay their legs and kind of just parachute the rest of the way down. And instead of landing on their feet, they break their fall with their chest and abdomen. Obviously, they don't completely tank the hit, but thanks to their relatively large surface area to weight ratio, they maximize the points of contact that smack the ground and therefore minimize the damage. And since cats apparently have lifelong beef with gravity, cats that reach terminal velocity instinctively know not to tense up, but instead relax and basically turn themselves into a kite on the way down. The thing is, if they don't... Okay, so now we're learning how to do this as people too. Spread out and try it. Like, it doesn't necessarily... I guess it doesn't feel like it makes sense to try and land on your stomach, but I guess that's what we want to do. Also, squirrels apparently can survive falls from like stupid high up because like the terminal velocity doesn't kill them. So squirrels also can survive like being dropped out of a plane or whatever. It's, you know, and they're going to be okay. They don't take that fall damage either. All right, we're learning. We're learning don't have time to reach terminal velocity, they end up getting hurt way worse. So like in a weird twist, cats that fall from two to seven stories actually end up more down bad than the ones that touch earth from 10 stories up. In fact, cats have about a 95% chance of falling from 10 stories and living. Meanwhile, the average human has a 95% chance of getting outlined with chalk. Oh, and don't think the cutoff's 10 stories either. One cat named Sabrina took a 32 story express trip to the ground and walked away with only a punctured lung and a chipped tooth. Not to mention she was released and sent home two days later. Being oh my god. to fall damage is how snow leopards can not only make a living in the Himalayas, but can legit fall clear off a cliff and the only injury they take is to their pride. Speaking of plot <laughs> armor, did you know cats are- It's like no one saw that, right? ...are actually built to predict the weather. You see, cat hair attracts static electricity, so they can pick up on the buildup of electrical charge that often comes before a really bad storm. And the cat's inner ears are sensitive to sudden drops in atmospheric pressure, which announce the arrival of a cloud assault. 
Technically, so can we. It's why our ears do the most and pop on a plane, but it's just that cat ears are that much more sensitive. And they can even smell rain and lightning coming. It's so OP that sailors oh. used to use cats aboard ships as a four-legged forecast. For forecast. No, no, yeah, forecast. Apparently, a cat <laughs> with the zoomies means you could expect strong winds. A cat that sneezed was... Well, cats, cats get... Mm, I don't know about that one. That is cool that, like, the with the ears and being able to predict static electricity and stuff. That's pretty awesome. Um, also, leeches apparently can predict tornadoes. They start to climb, and like if they're you got a leech in a cage, and they start to climb, like all of them start to climb up to the top. Tornado is coming. That's a fun animal fact that I know. Granted, no one will ever believe anything I say about an animal fact ever again because in the last time I did a video involving any kind of animal, I said that shark. I said that I knew that sharks weren't fish, but apparently they are fish. It just is still weird for me to think of them as a fish. I wasn't thinking they were like a mammal or anything. Like I knew that they weren't that, but I was just like, I don't know. I was thinking about them as something other than a fish. I was like, fish are like non sharks. I don't know. Anyway, anyway. Warning you of heavy rain. And apparently if one licked their fur against a grain mid sail, then you better make like God's golfing cause it's finna hail. Now to be fair, a month surrounded by nothing but sea and sea men gives you a lot of time to just make stuff up. I mean, just how many sea monster stories was just a whale freeing his willy? But there might be some truth to the cat thing. Cats will often spend extra time licking themselves before a bad storm since having damn fur helps with the static thing I told you about. Mm. So basically if cats could talk, we'd see a lot of meteorologists on unemployment. And speaking of no job, cats really managed to finish oh, I like the weather boy. Did you all see that? <laughs> Remember that meme? That kid. Wouldn't you like to know, weather boy? Him. Her way into living in nearly 50 million homes in America rent free. And one of the biggest reasons is because cats are the best manipulators nature has to offer. And if you think they aren't, you're probably a mark and you don't even know it. According to researchers at the University of Sussex, many cats will exploit their owners with a soliciting purr. It's more high frequency, triggers a sense of urgency in humans, and even someone resembles the cry of an infant, and we just have to assume that's intentional. And in experiments, not only did humans have a faster response time when hearing that purr compared to a normal one, it even affected people that never owned cats. This distress purr likely triggers a deep, innate nurturing response in humans, meaning you're literally hardwired to answer to it no matter what you were doing before. So apparently cats understand psychology too. That's not even really a joke because adult cats almost never meow to each other, but kittens do it with their mothers for food and warmth, and we have to assume they just figured out it works on humans too. And it's not just pet cats with this talent. Tigers have been known to imitate the sounds of their prey to lull them into a false sense of security. Tigers have reportedly mimicked sandbar deer and black bears. That's terrifying. I had no idea about that. I did know about like the like adult cats not talking to not meowing at each other. But they do meow at humans. And some of that I also know is because um, like it's it's literally just like how they communicate with us. They know that we as humans are like very verbally um, communicative. So it's like th they are basically saying hi. You know, it's like it's not necessarily like a an actual chat thing, but it's, you know, just small talk essentially in cat form. So they, they know that we respond to a verbal auditory uh sound more than we do the ways that they would usually communicate with each other so it's just like it's it's a it's just like they're being part of the family like that's like we talk so they'll talk back like that is just that is how they maintain like the pack bond essentially are you mooing because you want to be one with the cows I think that's how you trick cows into coming over. I think it is. And it's not just tigers. The South American Margay will verbally cosplay as a baby monkey just to murk its parents like a Disney movie. And clearly the manipulation tactics were passed down. In fact, cats are so nice. good at working people that they'd actually be great politicians. Which is probably how Mayor Stubbs of Talkeena, Alaska stayed in office for 20 years, even surviving assassination attempts by dogs, BB guns, and a deep fryer. But there's another special ability cats have, and it could arguably be the most overpowered of all. Pretty privilege. It's how dolphins got flipper, orcas got free willy. Meanwhile, the best movie deal shark management could get them was being typecast as Jaws. You see, there's this thing called baby schema. It basically means that humans have an intrinsic bias towards a certain set of facial features in people and animals, to the point where it just makes us want to protect them. And with their big head, wide eyes, and round forehead, cats 
literally remind us of babies. And even though it's a buff from nature, cats will 100% play into this by figuring out what combination of ear wiggling, whisker pointing, and eye narrowing gets the best response from people. Now add the fact that slow blinking with your cat can trigger oxytocin in both of you, the literal hormone that bonds a mother to her child, and you can see how cats were basically engineered to be irresistible. It's pretty privileged on every steroid possible. And it's wild because if any other animal had a reputation for cold indifference and global genocide, it'd be cost to cost <laughs> because it's cats, we just let it slide. Cat cuteness virtually has us in a chokehold, and I said virtual for a reason. It's said that 15% of all internet traffic is driven by cat content. That's 15% of all the stuff on the internet. I want you to think about that during this ad. Matter of fact, and I'm willing to put money on it, for some of y'all, this ad's about to be cat related. Oh, you're back. Oh, by the way, was it? Was it cat related? I'm yeah, I'm gonna put my ad there too, because I didn't get one for him, but was it? Was it cat related? The second ad I'm going to tell you is to remind you that, again, we have shot glasses and stuff now. This one is the bartender one. This one is for me. And then we also have, you know, we've got the Learns one. There it is. Hello, Learns. We have a Reacts one. Yay. And we have an anime one. So we've got ones for all of our channels. So what's the merch plug number two is what that one is. Merch plug number two. I'm actually curious, but the thing that almost always gets forgotten is that cats give back as much as they take, which leads to their next flex, healing powers. And not just for them. Science says having a cat living under your roof easily extends your subscription to life. Studies show that cat owners are 40% less likely to suffer a heart attack and have a 30% less chance of getting clapped by cardiovascular complications. And since cardiovascular disease is one of the leading causes of preventable death today, cats are like a real life one-up. Not to mention kids that grew up around cats have less of a chance of getting folded by allergies, especially if the exposure started in early infancy or even while they're still in the womb waiting room. And then there's the fact that just petting a cat can nerf stress levels and blood pressure. But if you really want to get literal about it, cats purr at a frequency that's said to improve bone density, repair tendons, and promote healing. I never really fully understood it, but apparently cats purr at a frequency that transmits vibrations throughout the body. Vibrations that help increase blood flow to the affected area, thereby bringing more nutrients. It's also believed that those same vibrations can help with soft tissue injuries like sprains and strains. I know I said they live rent free, but considering all they do to carry our health, Again, I, I feel like we could let it slide. It's not- So they're the cleric of the animal world, is what I'm hearing. Capable of great and immense damage very quickly and suddenly, but also capable of great healing. I will say though, I mean, we call them puppy dog eyes, you know, like with the, the, just these kind of look. I was taught to use that with great efficacy when I was like six, specifically how to like, how to use them <coughs> or rather I was told that the way I was employing them worked very effectively. So once I was told that six year old me was like, excellent. I am going to continue to use these to get exactly what I want at all times. And, um, yeah, I, I continued to use them very effectively for ever. Not just a buff to your health either. I vividly remember seeing a bunch of surveys that said that women on dating sites actually find men with cats more attractive. Something about seeming more nurturing or emotionally intelligent. On an unrelated note, I want y'all to meet my editor and content manager, Aslan. Say hi, Aslan. Hi! Huh? Kitty! Good boy. I tried to find the articles online, but apparently there was a switch up, and now women find cat owners less attractive. So on another unrelated note, yeah, he isn't mine. I'm actually just cat sitting for a friend. Shout out to you, Yusuf. Yeah, but anyway, cat claw armor is so strong that it might just be able to save you from cancer. We've all heard the stories of feline physicians detecting it in people before anyone else could. Cats have a sense of smell about 14 times stronger than humans, with their 200 million odor receptors to our pitiful, almost embarrassing five. <laughs> Tumors produce five volatile million. organic compounds, and these VOCs leave the body through sweat and breath. And there's a lot of respected researchers out there that will die on the hill that cats can sniff it out the same way dogs can. In 2018, rescue cat Mia climbed on owner Michelle Pearson's chest and wouldn't get off for anything, sniffing and pawing at, you know, the right one, while also meowing and looking at her, as, as cats do. It wasn't until her husband checked for himself that he felt the telltale lump, and that's how the cat that was rescued from certain death ended up returning the favor and saving her owner from stage 2 breast cancer. And that's not even much of a reach, considering there's also stories of cats warning their diabetic owners of their potentially fatally low blood sugar. Either that, or cats can see the future and they'll choose to keep you in theirs if they like you enough. And even that's low-key valid considering
I mean, it might be that too. That's also definitely possible. It's like, well, I have a steady source of meal, even though I pretend I do not ever get fed. But I do have that meals coming in steadily. So let's just make sure. And I get lots of pets. We want to keep that happening. So I'm going to use this precognition in my favor. Considering superpower number seven is that cats have <laughs> ultra instinct. Those whiskers can detect sudden changes in air currents to figure out the size, shape, and speed of nearby objects. It's like a whole radar system growing out of their face, and it's how a blindfolded cat is still hell on earth for any mouse in the area. Bro, I still don't think you're understanding just how much of a cheat whiskers are. Cats can even use their whiskers to figure out what direction their prey is trying to dodge it in right before they pounce, allowing them to cut off any possible escape routes. Wow. Now, to us, it's interesting and pretty cool, but to a mouse trying to make it home to his family, that's gotta be some bullshit. And cats don't just have them on their face, they have whiskers all over. And you can't even play dead with the cats since they have carpal whiskers that allow them to tell if their prey is playing or, you know, actually past tense. And honestly, this might be the most broken ability cats have. It's basically impossible to catch a cat slipping. They don't have to hear you, they don't even have to smell you. All it takes is a smallest change in air currents to dry snitch on you. But as predators, cats are the ones that do the sneaking, which only makes their next ability even more of a jihad for their prey. Superpower number eight, cats are athletic freaks of nature. No, seriously, cats are the most athletic group of animals on earth, and I'm gonna stand on that. There might not be a single event at the Olympics that one of the 40 flavors of feline can flex on us in. You want speed? Cheetahs can go zero to 60 in three seconds and can peak out at over 70 miles per hour. A cheetah on a Sunday morning jog can still get pulled over on the turnpike, ain't that crazy? Wanna see some long jumping? Cougars can clear 45 feet horizontally on an off day. You wanna see a cat get high minus the catnip? The serval jumps so high that their meal prep literally involves pimp slapping birds right out of the air. And for powerlifting, here we have a literal deadlift by a leopard using only its teeth. Yes, that is a rhino. Yes, that is a giraffe. And speaking of leopards, they're also gymnasts on steroids that turn trees into jungle gyms. And if you think you're safe from the smoke and water, keep in mind that the caiman Idiot. is part of one of the most successful group of predators in history. And all it took was an aquatic equalizer in the form of a cat to wreck their entire game plan. Not to mention jaguars have been seen swimming clear across the Panama Canal. Yeah, that one. Also, they have- Dang. Also, I will say though, for all their athletic ability, every time I see a video of a cat, like, attempt to make that jump and just pancaking, you know, it, it kind of equalizes it out just a little bit. A hydraulic press for a jaw. God help you if you get caught in it. And all I need to say about tigers is that this is an Indian gar, and even this walking Red Bull logo can get choked out by a 500 pound striped giggle gar field. And I don't even need to say anything about lions. Those triceps speak for themselves. Cats are nature's population control, and there isn't anywhere on earth outside of the devil's ice rink that doesn't have some kind of cat running. Oh, hi. Even the travel sized ones are a menace. The deadliest cat in the world is the African black footed cat, and because of their metabolism, not only can they catch up to 15 bodies a night, they also have a hunting success rate of 60%. Not even lions, tigers, and leopards can touch that. There's a reason wow. why domestic cats put billions of animals on shirts a year. And sometimes they turn entire species into history lessons. And unlike their wild cousins, a lot of times with domestic cats, they do it just for fun. Yeah, you think it's cute, but it's bloodlust. And if you're a mouse and op with whiskers, it's like Thanos. They do be inevitable, especially when you factor superpower number nine. Cats can teleport. I'm dead serious. Cats do this thing where they just spawn wherever the plot needs them the most. Yoink. As solitary hunters, cats can cover insane amounts of distance in times that really make no sense. Take mountain lions, for example. Young male cougars will often travel hundreds of miles away from their mother's territory to find their own. In 2009, a tagged cougar took a walk that took him from Black Hills, South Dakota, all the way to Greenwich, Connecticut. Basically, he hiked from Mount Rushmore to 30 miles from Manhattan. And it's not just cougars that go cross country. A tiger named T1 managed to walk 800 miles across India in only a few months, fueled by nothing but the power of horny. And of course, there's a story of El Jefe, a jaguar that randomly showed up in Arizona just outside Tucson. I could really keep going. From June 2017 to July 2018, a young lynx trekked from a wildlife refuge in Alaska all the way into the heart of the Yukon. A trip that totaled 2,174 miles. His name was Hobo, by the way. Can't even make that up. But the best story of teleporting cats was Clementine Jones. She was a cat in New York whose family left her behind because they were moving and they figured the trip would be too hard on a pregnant cat. Oh, little did they know. Clementine spent a couple of months with her kittens and then one day just headed out. Did she pop the better is, is is this cat about to homeward bound? One day just headed out 
and popped up at her old family's home 1,600 miles away in Denver. And it's not even like the family got tricked by a dupe. Clementine was born with an extra toe and had a burn mark on her shoulder. There was no mistaking her. There's only one cat power that's arguably more impressive. And you wow, that's... I mean, she went and found them? After they left her alone. After they abandoned her. I, I wouldn't go back to them. That's horrible. Like, they didn't, like, what? They didn't even, like, take her to a shelter or give her to a friend or something? I would, I would need to look into that because, like, I'm, like, kind of horrified by what this family apparently did. Hopefully. Because it sounds like they just left her. That's horrible. She's still homeward bounded right back to them? She found them. That's impressive. Not sure that's teleporting cat. I will say cats do seem to do that thing where they just sort of are in your face suddenly. But... You know, and it's like, they are cute though. They just want to be included. I have a chat with a friend, uh, pretty regularly and she's got cats and every single time we sit down to talk, uh, like video chat, um, like one of her cats just pops up and is just there and he just hangs out for the whole chat. And I, I think he does that. He probably, he, for, I think she says he does that for almost any time she does a video chat. She's going to be sitting down long enough to to be chatting he just shows up he just wants to be a part of the conversation it's just really cute you saw it coming as soon as you clicked on his video superpower number 10 mind control and it's all because of a little parasite called you know the name toxoplasma gandhi it all starts when this parasite enters a cat because they literally only reproduce in their bowels and their eggs don't get past until the cat has a movement usually in a litter box now here's the problem the Toxoplasma Gandhi needs to find a way back into the cat in order to hit restart on its life cycle. And the best way to do that is by setting up shop inside one of the animals on its grocery list. The only mm. issue is no mouse that values its life is going anywhere near a death sentence with toe beans to make it happen. So the parasite, which by the way basically uses the mouse as a layover, they begin to rewire its brain in order to remove the fear of cats. And I don't even know how, but infected mice can even start feeding for cat pee. With more irrational confidence than a father of born and Instagram model's comments, it's easier for the mouse to get body bagged by its number one op, thus repeating this vicious mouse murking cycle. And of course, we now believe that when this same parasite invades us, they do the same thing they would to a mouse. Which is why popular opinion is that the Toxoplasma parasite causes an unreasonable attraction to cats. And it's possible that this factory reset of our personality is due to the parasite making enzymes that control dopamine. And it's not just humans that can get infected. Turns out afflicted hyena cubs end up bolder in the face of lions, which is a great way for them to get invited to a meet and greet with Mufasa. It's not 100% proven that the parasite's responsible for all the cat people in the world, but hear me out. There's proof that this parasite was present in ancient Egyptian mummies. And these were the people that straight up worshipped them. Not to mention up to a third of all people alive right now have it, and most have no idea. And that's why I say cats have the wild- Well, at least, you know, it doesn't seem to hurt people. It just makes people like cats better, right? So it's like, <coughs> that's not so bad. It's just like, well, and the cats are never gonna- I mean, and the parasites will die out. Like, you know, it's like, they're in a person. Nothing gonna happen there. That is kind of funny, though. I will say there was a uh, a thing I just read. It was um, this old uh, ancient Japanese emperor, um, like one of the first cats that was uh, in Japan. He had this whole like he wrote this like piece um, about about his cat. And he's like, and his his fur is, is so it's like an inky black. I can't even describe how beautiful it is. It was really adorable. It was just like this whole thing, like talking about how perfect and amazing his cat was. And it was like, and he's better than all the other cats in the world. I'm sure of it. I'm like, I bet he was, dude. Good job, Mr. Emperor guy. Cat lover. I think it's just so, you know, it's just nice to see people talking about how great their cat is. I just think that's cute. It's like, oh. And also I like hearing about, um, like, uh, people of antiquity. Just, it's like, it proves that we have never really changed, you know? You know, you see those pictures of, like, people dressing up their cats but the pic photo is from like 1898 or something it's like one of the first pictures ever taken and it was of a cat you know it's just like you gotta take a photo of the kitty cat wildest plot armor i've ever seen because real talk only cats could spin a parasitic infection into a way of living rent free trust me i would know isn't that right me <laughs> he's got another one My cats are the most broken animals in nature with with cats being nature's cutest form of population control i talk about them a lot in my book hold on sorry girl Okay, 
Bye, with cats being nature's cutest form of population control. I talk about them a lot in my book, 100 Animals That Can Redacted Kill You. Link in the description if you want to see for yourself. But make sure you drink water, hug your mother, hug a cat. It might just save your hug life. And if he allows it, I'm going to see y'all in the next one. Oh, you're such a good boy. You're such a, you're such a good boy. Okay, okay. You can go now. Uh, there you go. <sighs> I love that guy. Yeah. I do love cats. I really do. This made me happy. This video made me very pleased. So I hope you liked it. I, you know, I know a lot of people don't like cats out there, but I feel like they're just, I feel like they are misunderstood. You know, people are like, oh, they don't feel anything. It's like, no, they do. They do. You just got to respect the boundaries. If you're one of those people who's like, well, cats are just emotionless monsters. They don't love you like a dog does. It just means you're not respecting that cat's boundaries. Sorry to say it. The cat will tell you when it is comfortable. Just, just respect it. And it will respect you. And, like, there's a thousand stories out there of cats. Again, like you said, predicting people, like, trying to warn people when they're going to get hurt. Or, like, they notice when you're sad and they come up and they just sit on you and just be there for you. I'm like, they, cats can feel love for their human just as much as a dog can. Um, they're just a little bit less... Uh, vocal about it i guess like it's a subtler it's usually a more subtle response you know but they're there they love you be nice to cats please and and you know whatever whatever we could have a fight about it in the comments if you really want to i'm not but because again i'm not saying that cats are better than dogs i'm saying they are just as great and we love animals here in this house and if i could but if i could have a pet it would probably be a cat, but I can't because one of my roommates is allergic, but it would probably be a cat just because again, I don't want to have to take it on walks in the rain or the cold. Uh, it's like, mm, no, I don't feel like it. So, so for me, it would be a cat, but uh, it's okay. Anyway irrelevant thank you so much for joining me today if you want to see more content like this make sure you hit that subscribe button and if you want to know exactly when we release the new video then hit the bell icon as well don't forget to like the video and just be aware that we do have memberships for this channel um and as time goes on i'm going to be adding a lot more stuff to uh members only sections of the channel things like you know just extra videos or uh like and they won't have um ads on them i'm gonna probably keep the the ads on the membership videos to a minimum if i put them on at all um and we'll have early videos for them as well so we you know we'll, we need to get some first i've got a couple th members videos i think out there ready and waiting um but anyway uh I'm, I might also have some like longer videos there as well um there's a couple of things that i would love to sit down and watch but they're just they're so long um so i you know just stuff like that will be available for members so just take a peek at the description box below we've got links to the store we got links to the membership we got links to our other channels go ahead and check those out as well and i will see you all in the next video